Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. Is most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks for being here for Monday's show. Uh, starting out with the satellite imagery, we've got low pressure slowly moving eastward here across Bristol Bay today, and moisture flowing northward here along a frontal boundary across Kodiak Island on up into south central Alaska. Clouds and areas of rain extending back to the west. To the north, uh, more clouds, but sunshine over here to the east, uh, Copper River Basin on up into the 40 mile country, and also along the uh, Brooks Range to the eastern north slope areas, and on back down across the northwest valleys to uh, the Seward Peninsula. Also had uh, a lot of sunshine today here over the southeast Bering Sea, sunny skies across the eastern Aleutians, and then with this low center, some areas of light rain and uh, gusty winds there along the Alaska Peninsula. Mostly cloudy here over a good portion of the southeast coast today. It looks like some clearing occurred up to the north. And again, off the coast over in Canada, but clouds right in over the inside waters there. Again, clearing out a little bit down to the south. Lying temperatures push up toward 70 degrees today. And rolling this through again, uh, Warm temperatures showing up, uh, lower 70, 72 at Deering this afternoon, but a lot of uh, clouds out through this way. And this front up here along the Arctic coast there, uh, about to uh, mostly sliding eastward, but it's about to make a push to the southeast here tonight. On the chart for today, you can see an area of rain, it's uh, light rain, just a few hundredths of an inch along that front there. A little more uh, gusty on the winds, western Arctic coast, uh, Seen uh, 35 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts today. Uh, Point Lay on up to Wainwright at the Sook. Seeing those gusty winds and also the western north slope. Less wind off to the east there. And again, the sunshine here, northwest valleys across the Seward Peninsula. Showers along the southwest coast and gusty southwest winds in the uh, 15 to 30 mile per hour range. Not all that strong there for the peninsula and some rain pushing across Kodiak Island and of course uh, sliding on up to the north here into south central Alaska, areas of light rain throughout the day today, maybe a few showers over in Prince William Sound. Otherwise, again, mostly cloudy over the southeast coast, uh, high pressure off the coast there, high pressure developing here out over the Bering Sea, and this system down to the south uh, drug some moisture in the form of uh, fog drizzle and light rain in toward the eastern Aleutians with uh, foggy skies all the way out to Shimia once again. And for tonight, we'll see that front up to the north uh, drop southward roughly into about that position by 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. So areas of light rain from the eastern coast there right on down sliding into uh, first across the Noatak Valley tonight. And then after midnight, that'll possibly push into the uh, or it should push into uh, Kotzebue Sound, northern Seward Peninsula. Westerly flow over the top of this high should pull a fair amount of moisture, at least low clouds and uh, possible IFR type weather in toward Norton Sound, back across St. Lawrence Island. High pressure, light winds hold over the southeast Bering Sea. 
And uh, this low keeps it damp there over the central Aleutians, uh, particularly for Atka Island. And uh, surface low now moves uh, across the southern Cuscombe Valley to about the Alaska Range uh, later on tonight. Uh, a little bit of a breeze, maybe northwest 10 to 20 there along the southwest coast. A lot of clouds, fog, light rain, drizzle, and uh, occasional light rain continues here for south central Alaska and to a uh, portion mainly western Prince William Sound and drying out there with the front pushing in through the western Gulf of Alaska for Kodiak Island and uh, mostly cloudy skies, maybe a few showers or light precipitation again uh, here from uh, around the Sitka area, maybe Yakutat pretty light there, otherwise just mostly cloudy here for the remainder of the Panhandle and pretty fair conditions over the central interior, just an isolated shower maybe along, along the Alaska range, but uh, much drier than uh, today. Still have the flood advisories out uh, for tonight and actually through tomorrow for the central interior for uh, still uh, experiencing some minor flooding in those rivers. Again, uh, mostly from the Fairbanks area back out toward uh, Tanana on that area covered by those advisories. And for tomorrow, upper level trough pulls eastward here. So uh, front weakening as it pushes eastward, but holding together enough to keep some moisture chances going as they slide into Yakutat and back to the west across Prince William Sound of the Kenai Peninsula. Maybe some light rain lingering, uh, especially in the morning hours here, right up the Chugach Mountains, turning an arm, possibly in the northern Cook Inlet, drier to the west. Showers develop along the Alaska Range and a band of light rain from that low center there over the uh, Yukon Flats along the front, back out across Norton Sound, southern Seward Peninsula now and higher pressure following that in behind. So northeast wind should uh, dry it out and clear it out there from the northwest coast, uh, Kotzebue Sound, back up along the western north slope areas as most of the moisture now shifted off uh, over towards uh, areas east of New Exit. And out in the Aleutians, uh, front kind of develops here now with uh, southeast winds, uh, could keep up to 20 knots in advance of that, but uh, definitely rain, uh, light precipitation, <clears throat> Probably IFR here for the eastern Aleutians back across central areas. High pressure holding, keeping the winds light. Sky's mostly cloudy there for the southeast Bering Sea, patchy areas of fog. And uh, look for some clearing here, dry conditions anyway, variable clouds for the Cuscoquim Delta. Out to Nunavak Island, clouds on the increase there for the Yukon. And then some showers kind of pass by there across Kodiak Island. Uh, morning into midday tomorrow. And then those will slide on off to the east and with that west-northwest flow, we'll probably get in some afternoon clearing there across the entire area. And then the outlook for Wednesday, that uh, system out to the west there uh, pushes uh, fairly rapidly, uh, at least comparatively rapidly here, bringing rain tomorrow night to the Alaska Peninsula. Now it'll push northward and eastward to Kodiak Island and into Bristol Bay on Wednesday and extend back to the Pribilofs, uh, another system out there to the west, uh, bearing down on the central Aleutians with some more light rain, high pressure up over the northern Bering Sea, so light winds there all the way back to the southwest of Shimia, a lot of low clouds, areas of fog again out over the Bering, and a pretty good area here, possibly mostly sunny from Nunavak Island, right across the Cuscoom Valley into south central Alaska for Wednesday, uh, trough up in this area, kicking off some showers, maybe Isolated thunderstorms there, eastern Tana Valley, uh, Alaska Range, northward to possibly Eagle, otherwise to the north to the west, uh, partly sunny. And for the southeast coast, upper level low pressure drifting across the area moves right over the top of you midday or by the afternoon on Wednesday. So uh, showers more numerous and heaviest in the uh, morning hours, and they'll start uh, diminishing late in the day. Temperatures down that way this afternoon, all in the 60s, uh, 66 at uh, Heidelberg, Craig up to 69, 63 at Sitka, Juneau 64 degrees, 62 in Yakutat, uh, 50s Prince William Sound in the sunshine here, we had uh, 70s, especially over the central eastern Copper River Basin, McCarthy pushed up to 74, 78 at Toke this afternoon, and uh, south central Alaska, 50s, uh, 57 in Palmer with uh, Tanana Valley, mid to upper 60s in that area. Same thing right up to the Brooks Range. Umead Airfield is 69. And uh, Eastern Arctic Coast, mid to upper 50s. Cooler conditions from Barrow down to uh, Cape Lisbon. And a 49 degree reading this afternoon at uh, Kivalina with uh, 70 at Buckland. Otherwise, 60s across the Seward Peninsula, cooler out along the coast. Uh, Cusquam, Yukon Valley areas 
uh, lower valleys here, 60s to, uh, well, mid-60s on out to the coastline. Then you get into the mid-50s there at Amonic and Koryak. Uh, 57 degrees this afternoon at St. Paul and uh, dry conditions there. Mid to upper 50s out over the Aleutians and uh, 50s, lower 60s for the Alaska Peninsula. Lows for tonight, 30s on the central Arctic coast into the north slope here. 40s to mid 50s here over the interior areas with uh, 50 degree readings right down to the southwest coast. 40s lower 50s for the Aleutians and the southeast coast here upper 40s to lower 50s. Highs for tomorrow, uh, 60 to 70 plus here for the panhandle depending on where the sun breaks out. Lower 70s again, central eastern interior, north of the Alaska range, uh, 65 to 70 ish here for the Susitna Valley, Copper River Basin areas and 60s everywhere else. Kodiak Island, Northeast Bristol Bay, even the Alaska Peninsula still reaching the 60s, 50s for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Flying weather tomorrow morning, uh, IFR of course with that frontal boundary right up into Prince William Sound, east side of the Kenai Peninsula, VFR Northern Cook Inlet down to about Anchor Point, areas of IFR for the Western Alaska Range, VFR to the north, VFR for the Copper River Basin, VFR for much of the southeast coast, uh, IFR here from the Western Brooks Range down to St. Lawrence Island, southward along the uh, coast there to uh, near Tuksuk Bay and some IFR just brushing the central Arctic coast. Uh, big area VFR here forecast for the Pribilofs tomorrow and that continues into the afternoon, extending right down across the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, lingering marginal conditions here along the Western Alaska Range, maybe the central areas but uh, improving throughout the day, diminishing IFR along the eastern Gulf Coast to about Yakutat, maybe a swath up here with that uh, front uh, along the Brooks Range to uh, possibly Kaktovik, otherwise marginal VFR for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast, as well as the Northern Bering Sea. And for Anatovik, marginal will be coming IFR tomorrow. And again, starting out VFR, but uh, both those passes deteriorating throughout the day. And Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR at times, rainy, Marginal at times. Windy though, I'll go for uh, VFR. Isabel, occasionally marginal, but uh, Mintasta, optimistically VFR the entire day. Tanita, same forecast. And for Portage, IFR. Chilkoot and White, uh, VFR. Freezing levels here, uh, snowfall level down to about 2,000 feet on the central and western Arctic coast late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Warming considerably to 12,000 feet there out over the Bering Sea and extending all the way out uh, to the west, 8,000 feet, weak upper level low, tracking eastward here, uh, right in this position by 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, otherwise back up to 12,000 feet over the southeast coast. Icing threats uh, of about 8,000 feet of mostly the rime variety here, light to very isolated uh, rime icing, uh, very isolated moderate rime icing, north Gulf Coast, south central Alaska, the Alaska Range, and then areas of up here, above about 6,000 feet with the uh, front up in that area and possibly some icing possibilities there for the eastern Aleutians. And uh, ridging right up along the southeast coast tomorrow midday and into the afternoon, but an approaching upper level low here across Kodiak Island tomorrow will continue eastward and move across the southeast coast on Wednesday. Uh, flow up here around the upper level low way up there toward the north at about 70 knots right along the Brooks Range and another system pushing eastward across the central Aleutians. For the 9,000 foot wind flow southwesterlies uh, 10 to 15 picking up to 30 knots there uh, up toward the northeast border otherwise lighter back up toward the Arctic coast. Pretty light variable winds here southern Alaska ridging light variable winds eastern Bering Sea and really not much wind all the way out in the Aleutians. Pretty light for most of the panhandle. This 30 knot wind, that'd be Western Dixon entrance on down to the southeast. 3,000 feet, uh, showing much the same pattern here. West, southwest, or mostly southwest, central, and northern interior. Uh, could kick up to 25 knots there over the Yukon Flats, otherwise 10 to 15. Uh, could see some northeasterlies at about 25 coming out of the Chuck CC through the Bering Strait there, catching the western portion of St. Lawrence Island, farther to the south, westerly flow over high pressure ridging there across the Alaska Peninsula to the Pervolos, but that only at about 10 to 15 knots. Low pressure tracking eastward. Uh, light winds here across southern Alaska, maybe 10 to 15 knots there. Trinity Islands could see northwest up to 25, and uh, basically light winds for the southeast coast, also out over all of the Aleutians. And turbulence-wise, not a whole lot here. Could be some uh, 
light mechanical there for the Aleutian Range, Kodiak Island, maybe Kamishak Bay, as well as from Nikolsky over to Atka. Bering Strait could be a little bumpy and along the south side of the Eastern Brooks Range. And uh, really stretching this could be some light to isolate moderate chop there for Northern Lynn Canal. And after hangar flying, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health here in Anchorage. Thanks to Alaska Public Media for allowing us to bring you hangar flying. This evening, we are pleased to have Matt Freeman on our show. Matt is an airport project engineer with the Federal Aviation Administration's Airports Division here in Anchorage. Welcome to Hangar Flying, Matt. Well, thank you, Mary. I'm glad to be here. So we're going to be talking about one of the safety features that's available for pilots in Alaska. And what we do as pilots is have the ability to mark to practice our takeoffs mm -hmm. and landings on marked runways. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do this in a, a safe environment before we actually go out and uh, conduct off airport operations. Can you give us some background on how and why this runway marking project got started in Alaska? Well, sure. Um, geez, it's been uh, many years ago I was actually working as a project manager up in Fairbanks uh, and working with the uh, Alaska State DOT. And uh, while up there, Tom George continually advocated for uh, some type of markings to uh, uh, create what we now call a practice gravel runway. And uh, we really, it was, a, it was a tough nut to crack. It was trying to find some way to mark a runway without creating any collision hazard was, uh, was challenging. On top of that, uh, if you look at any airport that's, that has federal funds, uh, the, uh, our office or nationally, we like everything standardized. <laughs> so that's a, it's going to be a 60 foot wide runway, a 75 foot runway. And uh, when we start uh, placing markings on the runway, again, we're really very cautious about uh, putting uh, mar new, new markings on the runway. Uh, so it just kind of sat there until uh, uh, we actually had a, a construction project or the state of Alaska had a construction project where uh, the, we did half width runway operations and we were moving the runway and we were using the, uh, those traffic cones to indicate where the runway was. Well, it was tough to see them and, and it really hit home when uh, one time I was uh, landing at one of those airports, I reviewed the safety plan, I knew where the runaway was and had difficult time finding that landing surface. Mm. We actually, uh, uh, one of the project engineers up there came up with painting a runway center line on that runway and that was, that created the positive visual guidance. So we took that idea and then uh, uh, worked with, then I had to go back to headquarters because you can't just put markings on runways without a modification to standard. And uh, there we ended up uh, getting a modification to standard for actually six airports and we, we placed these, uh, uh, these uh, markings, uh, which are paint markings, paint on gravel, to create what's look, what looks like a, a practice gravel runway. So uh, I, I think what happened is, is uh, once we got the, uh, that standard, the next thing is to, is to uh, work with an airport to agree to, uh, uh, to uh, place the markings on the runways and, uh, and we went from there. So who actually goes out and does the painting on the runways? Well, that was, that was actually a, a, you know, another story in itself. But uh, the first airport that actually said, yes, we're going to do this was Fairbanks International Airport. And it was the users group, a culmination of uh, several of the uh, users and the organizations up there that got together and uh, 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 developed a, a process for uh, creating a templates to mark these, uh, these two foot by four foot stripes that were placed at, a, at, at certain intervals. And, uh, and it was really a, a combination of, of uh, coordinating with the airport owner, 
uh, because you can't just go on an airport and and sure. start marking. There needs to be a process and, uh, and coordination, notams placed in order to uh, in, in order to uh, uh, to do that work. So it was uh, the uh, uh, airport operations. They provided some folks, and then uh, uh, a volunteer group. They got out and they actually go out uh, uh, typically once in the spring and once in the fall, uh, mark the runways, and uh, and then go out and have a party afterwards. Well, that sounds like yeah. a, a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, plus, it's a really good um, safety intervention. So that's great. What distances are marked? Well, the uh, the markings are uh, the, the the markings are placed at the runway threshold, of course, as they're two foot wide by four feet long, and we place three of them on the, uh, at, the at the threshold. And then uh, subsequently, every 100 feet, there's an additional two, uh, two markings left and right, for typically 600 feet. Okay. And, uh, and those markings are placed, for, they're, they're placed uh, 25 feet from outside to outside. And, uh, and that, that creates the, the prism or the rectangle for the 25-foot the, uh, uh, the wide by maybe 600-foot uh, long runway. That's great. So you're giving pilots um, width as well as length uh, challenges. So that's yeah. a great idea. Um, Matt, we're going to have to wrap this up. Thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to having you back on the show and learning more about the marked runways. That would be great. Thank you, Mary. It's good to be here. Thanks, Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, thank you for watching Hangar Flying. Welcome back. Sea ice analysis for today. Uh, there's some white there on the coast, uh, a barrel, and then off to the east there's a bunch of brash ice along the barrier islands and to the north. And forecast uh, later on in the week is if uh, southeast winds develop here, uh, that I brash ice will pull farther north and then you'll be able to sail right on through to uh, Baffin Island. And for the uh, marine forecast, northwesterlies 15 to 20 knots here over the inside waters. Uh, south, uh, kicking up to 25 knots, Lynn Canal, west to southwest to southeast there along the coast. And light winds continue, westerly breezes here along the coastline with uh, sea six to seven feet. Winds here, northern Lynn Canal come down to 15 knots. Light variable winds over the inside waters with slight seas. And for Prince William Sound, easterly east 15 tomorrow, northeast 15, uh, northern Cook Inlet, uh, northwest Kamishak Bay. Small craft advisories here for the uh, east side Kodiak Island, and then 15 knots become 25 knots out of the southeast for the North Gulf Coast, southwest 20 for Shelikoff Strait. On Wednesday, uh, no change there in that zone. Kamishak Bay, westerly is 20 knots, four foot seas. Hold on to the small craft advisories there for Kodiak Island. And southwesterlies diminished down to 10 knots there for the eastern Gulf Coast, uh, about the same for Prince William Sound, pretty light and even northern Cook Inlet. For Bristol Bay, west 20 knots uh, tomorrow, and the Alaska Peninsula, westerlies at 15 with four to five foot seas. Wednesday's forecast, southwest 20 here, uh, Pacific side of the peninsula, right up uh, towards Shelikoff Strait, south 15 on the Bering Sea side, and even lighter for Bristol Bay. For the Eastern Aleutians, southeast 15 tomorrow, and then they pick up to about 20 knots here, west of Nikolsky on out to Adak, dropping back again south, pretty light, south of variable winds out here for the Western Aleutians, the sea's only running at about four feet. And then for uh, Wednesday, again, light wind conditions, uh, slight sea heights out there to the west, even the uh, central Aleutians here, kind of a variable, light variable wind condition there with three to five foot seas. Eastern Aleutians, uh, southwesterlies at 15, four foot seas. And for the southwest coast, north of Nunavak Island, westerlies at 15, northwest at the same speed to the south, southwest 20 there for St. Matthew Island, and then northeast, 25 knots there for uh, St. St. Lawrence Island, and light winds for the Pribilofs. And then those become easterly at 15 on Wednesday. Light variable winds here across the northern Bering Sea, right into Nunavak Island. Uh, northeast 10 to 15 or 5 to 15 there to the south and northerly is at about 15 for St. Lawrence Island. So pretty light winds coming up from Wednesday. And for the Arctic coast, uh, 
West and northwest, 10 to 20 knots here, central and eastern coast, northerlies at 20 for the west side, right on down toward the Bering Strait. And then for Wednesday, uh, two to three foot seas here, kick up to about four feet there across the uh, Chuck Sea Basin and to the south with north to northeast winds only 10 to 15. Light winds here, west northwest at 10 knots or less across the central and eastern Arctic coast with seas two feet or less. And uh, looking at tonight's forecast again, uh, low pressure both at the surface and aloft, tracking eastward here. So uh, rain tapers off here over Bristol Bay and uh, the Kilbrook Mountains, but continues over the Kenai Peninsula, South Central Alaska, and mostly western Prince William Sound, back to some of that could spill over into the eastern or southeastern Cuscombe Valley, but not a lot. A breakthrough here, this front coming southward with a band of rain uh, following that in behind. High pressure off the coast, but a lot of low stuff there, especially along the coast of the Panhandle tonight. And uh, about the same into tomorrow. Could be some breaks, mostly along the eastern border and down to the south again. Isolated showers to the north. Weakening front pushing eastward as the upper level trough pulls into the Gulf of Alaska. But we've got uh, periods of light rain, maybe some fog. Cordova, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, in toward uh, Kenai Peninsula, possibly getting into the extreme eastern uh, Cook Inlet area, especially up toward Anchorage and Palmer. Showers to the north. This system areas light rain from the northeast, right back down along the front here into uh, southern Seward Peninsula. Maybe some sunshine there, some high pressure over the Cuscombe Delta, and also back to the north behind the front. Winds become a little more northeasterly, so that usually means some sunshine here for the uh, northwest coast, possibly the north slope areas uh, as well. That's just a maybe. And then some more rain slipping on into the eastern Aleutians. Now tomorrow night this system will spread rain across the Alaska Peninsula and then on Wednesday moves into Kodiak Island and Bristol Bay. Have a great evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Alaska Pipeline Service Company fueling philanthropic programs and dedicated to creating educational and professional opportunities for Alaska Native people.